This video is brought to you by artofthetrek.com. Art of the Trek just recently released their public points of in interest to their maps. Just simply go to the overlays menu on their maps and you have the ability to add campsites, trailheads, water sources, and scenic locations to their public map. This is excellent feature to have as you can help out your fellow hikers in planning their trips and seeing uh, public points of interest. So by simply clicking the overlays menu, selecting which point of interest you would like to add and hitting the plus sign at the bottom, you can add that public point of interest. So Kevin's driving right now and we're in Dolly Sods and we're going to add our favorite campsite that we always talk about in our Dolly Sods videos. Super easy to do. Just fill out some basic information and details about your point of interest and then go ahead and add it. What's great about this too, to help encourage people to use this point of interest feature, um, if you contribute at least a dozen or so of these, Art of the Trek would be happy to send you a free swag bag. So, hey, free swag is always great. Anyways, head on over to artofthetrek.com, check out this feature, and now let's get into the video. Welcome back to another video here. Yes. Down in the studio. Yep. Pre-live stream Pre talking heads videos. <laughs> Which everybody just crushes. And, uh, and you know, not that this will be released uh, immediately, but we'll have a live stream right after this. And I'll put a link to that live stream right now. Who knows what we'll talk about? Yeah. And uh, speaking of live streams. We'll talk about our copyright infringement we got. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of live streams, if you want to make sure that you're up to date on when we go live, make sure you hit that bell icon. Hit the bell also, check out our Backcountry BSing YouTube channel. Check out the podcast version of it. Check out the merch store. All you the know, stuff. A, a bunch of people bought hoodies last month. Nice. Yeah. And they're really soft hoodies. Yeah, they're pretty They're pretty good. Okay, today's video, hot topic. Very hot. I love this video. This video really speaks to us. Yeah. And we are going to talk all about gear that is, it's worth the wait, at least in, in our heads, you know. There are times to nickel and dime your gram counts for sure when it comes to things, but when it comes to these items, I think they're they're worth the wait. Yeah, and some of my choices too are also like weather dependent and seasonal yeah, as well. Yeah, I have one seasonal one yeah. too. Can we make a rule like, let's just not talk about chairs. That is my second item. Uh, yeah. So it's worth the wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Okay. Uh, we'll get. All right, we'll just start with that one. Chairs worth the wait. Next. Suck, suck it, Kyle. Next. <laughs> all right. So my first item, and I this is when we when we when we film these videos, like I have no idea what he's gonna say. He has yeah. no idea what I'm gonna say. So it's kind of fun that way. Um, my first item is gonna be, and I have a bunch of these, but a a good, probably not light, pillow. Yeah, I have I have like a general sleep gear category, but I was okay. I was okay. I, Fair. I but I also specifically called out pillow as well. Like hey, I wish especially if you're a side sleeper. Yeah, I wish I was one of those those people that could just like ball up your puffy and that's enough. No, nope. not happening. No, nope. at all. Now, one thing I will say is I I have used and I think I'm going to use it this year a little bit more. I've used the Z Packs felt lined sack. Mm -hmm. You just have to carry more clothes, but if you shove stuff in there, it actually makes a pretty good pillow. But I have a Nemo pillow that weighs like 10 ounces. That is absolutely worth the wait. Um, we're so I'm a side sleeper and to sleep on your side, you just need, you need a, you need a pillow yeah. and it's worth the wait. We always say invest in sleep. I don't care if it, if it weighs a few more ounces, good pillow. Yep. All right. What do you got? Well, I, um, Okay. I'm going to talk about rain gear and it really depends. It, it, this is going to be one of those trip dependent things and also seasonal stuff. So like during the summer and spring and certain, a lot of the fall will carry like lightweight rain gear, like the stereotypical outdoor research helium jackets. Yeah. But that when it gets, yeah, it does. Suck. <laughs> Get a heavier one that works. Better. It, no, it works for like spring and summer, like, sorry, quick summer, you know, yeah. summer rain yeah. and it's still warm. Because it soaks through pretty quick, but it does the job for like. But it rain. soaks through. Yeah, if it's like a if you're gonna be hiking all day in rain, you're gonna be wet. Yeah. So, anyways, going to my point. Okay. Especially in the winter, colder, like take a heavier like we take heavier rain jackets, sometimes rain pants, and uh, rain pants are a good one. Yeah. I, they're, Just they, when it's cold rain. Yeah, cold rain. Yeah. Yeah, that was really, really If it's clutch. raining in like the mid to upper 30s, yeah. I think rain, like a heavy rain setup is definitely worth the wait. Yeah. So 
Next item, and, and this is kind of going to get into, I think, a, a winter discussion, but I'm going to say um, a good insulated sleeping pad is definitely worth bringing and worth the weight, even if it's not winter. But I think this gets into a discussion about winter gear in general, mm -hmm. because to be comfortable and to not die in the winter, you have to bring heavy stuff. And I think it's worth it to bring even like just heavy stuff. I, I think weight is out the door in the winter. Yeah, definitely, especially with clothes. Yeah, yeah like down jackets, maybe down pants, insulated sleeping pads, maybe double wall shelters, um, spare shoes, spare maybe. shoes, uh, heavy Gore-Tex boots. Yeah. Heavier jackets. Yeah. I think, um, I'm trying to think of a, an item you bring in the winter that isn't like that is super light. You know, I don't know our stove. Yeah. I don't know. Everything yeah. in the winter is just heavier, yep. but in the winter, you know, I, I know a lot of people watching this, they might not do winter backpacking. Winter backpacking is a totally different beast. It just requires heavy stuff and you just want to be comfortable out there and you don't want to die. So weights out the window. Yep. Next item that I'm going to say is absolutely worth the wait. And this is kind of a winter thing too. Not kind of it is. The hot tent. Uh, that's a good one. Hot tent is absolutely worth the wait and yeah. to be entirely honest with you our hot tent setup stove tent weighs about eight pounds split between us that's four pounds a pop that's really not that heavy it's really yeah. not i mean it's heavier than a 15 ounce duplex yeah but it's not that heavier than a than a winter hammock setup to no. be honest with you yeah fully kitted out right um it's de i mean it's definitely heavier but Oh man, that's totally worth the wait. Yeah, and uh, we have a bunch of videos on hot tenting. Check it out. It's worth the wait in the winter to just be comfortable. There's a kind of a theme here with winter stuff, but a hot tent, absolutely worth the wait. Yep. All right, what do you got next? All right, next one I'm going to say that's, that's okay. It It's person to person dependent and definitely based on your comfort, but I'm going to say a GPS unit. Oh my God. I was going to say that. And yeah. I was going to get it off the wall. Yeah. Get it off the wall. All now, right. hold on. Nice. I want to, I want to, I want to say some caveats. Yeah, it's worth the wait so you don't die. Yeah. yeah. I want to say some caveats here. We don't carry this one that often because we're together. We've been carrying it more. Yeah. A lot. But like if you're a solo hiker or you're going to be in a position where maybe you're just a little uncomfortable being out there. It's definitely worth the wait for some sleep. I think solo hiking yeah. is almost a necessity, at least from how paranoid I am. Yeah. Um, now if, there, if it helps you sleep at night and and get, and get you out it's of it. It's not a, like the, you can get way like I really like the mini that they have. This one is you could I don't know why I bought one this big. You can get lighter ones. Yeah, and I think I was, I think I I talking about more from like an emergency standpoint not necessarily like navigation even though you can correct do some, even no, you i can would do never use that to navigate it's really not that good to navigate pre-downloaded gps maps on your phone are way better than yeah. these things yeah. no i mean from like uh being able to contact people there's value in that like texting your family and stuff yeah then like if you get pinned behind a rock or something like 127 hour style or like that dude in, or that uh, dude in the winds in the winds <laughs> Oh. Like you're not gonna die, so yeah. worth the wait. That's a good one. Um, all right, what do you got? You got another one? Yeah, I I talk about this often, but uh, we don't care about the weight of our food. Oh, I had a I had so okay. So my thing that was worth the wait was bringing fun food and fun ways to cook food. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And then this can kind of all be lumped together. Now, yeah. obviously, I'm not carrying like a two liter of diet coke, but. Dude, that'd be, maybe maybe we, we will. Do that in the summer with the ice. <laughs> we should totally do that. I mean, uh, it's within reason, I guess. But it, but the weight of food has never really stopped us on most of our trips. You know, like some Colorado of our, Trail, it did. Yeah, like some of our longer trips, will we will like consider that. But like, yeah. um, in general, we're big proponents of fun food, and and like if that means we're gonna carry like a bunch of like cooking gear and heavy food yeah worth the then, wait then we're doing definitely it. um so seeing you fiddle with that another thing that's worth the that wait, was on my list good old can of bear spray uh, it's like you know it's one of those things it's just it's in the same category as that like not everybody wants to carry it and that's fine you're and never you're probably never gonna need it yeah and it's and like depends on where you're backpacking but like i don't know a, a lot of people will carry bear spray and um Maybe not necessarily always for bears, but 
Yeah, good point. Um, I, I mean, or mountain cougars. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, I've been seeing, I've been watching. I went down a rabbit hole about cougars the other day. That that stuff's way scarier than bears, <laughs> potentially, because they hunt you. Yeah, good can of bear spray though. Uh, if, not light, but um, if it gives you peace of mind and comfort, helps you sleep at night. Yeah, then then take it. Like when I was so when I was solo in in Tahoe, I carried both of these things, mm-hmm. and I would do that every single time. So. Uh, bear spray, kind of like you know, emergency things, yeah. um, worth their weight. So next thing, and I'll be curious your thoughts on this. Um, something that's I I have found, and de- depending on the trip, but to be worth their weight, not super um, heavy, simple item, good pair of camp shoes. Yeah, they're nice to have, definitely for winter. Um, I, I, I go back and forth on uh, camp shoes. I will say, like, it is nice if you've been hiking all day to get to camp and, like... Especially if your feet are wet. Yeah. If your feet are wet, and if your feet are wet for days and days and days on end, you need to dry them out. And, and in winter, in my opinion, you, you got to have something. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, right, 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 right. But, yeah, I don't carry them very often, but, you know, people love them. And, and we've... I've definitely taken them, and it's nice too. And fun fact, I just bought a pair of Crocs <laughs> for a backpacking. Nope, just to wear. Just to wear. <laughs> All right, <laughs> Crocs are a good camp shoe. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the last item I had, and we've kind of talked about this, but only because we've been carrying this pretty consistently for like the last year, year and a half, is a canister stove. Yeah, I, and, I, I and brought that the up accompanying too. Accompanying fuel canister. Yeah. Because they're much heavier than we. We still carry alcohol stoves. We carry alcohol stoves for a while, but literally the last year when we've been sharing one, a canister stove just for... We just got lazy. They're just so easy, pretty cheap, easy to get fuel. Um, if you're using it for multiple people, it's way better than an alcohol yeah. stove. Um, I think a canister stove is worth the wait. We should uh, kick it old school and take the, el- the alcohol stove sometime. Uh, honestly, for the Tahoe Rim Trail... Or the, uh, the Colorado Trail? Yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not opposed to an alcohol stove. Um, I don't know if you can take them on the TRT. It's a great question. Yeah, yeah. great question. Um, all right, so those. That's all I had. What do you, you got? You got some other things? No, I, I'm good. I mean, I have some other small stuff, but they're kind of like bundled together with what we've talked about right now. So. Yeah, and I think this video really talks about how, like, you know, especially you and me a little bit, but you kind of like. When you get into backpacking and then you get into light stuff, you go like super light. And then you and, work and your then way you back. And you just start dialing it back, you know? Well, there are times when it's great to go light, and then there are times when it's great to carry heavier gear. Um, and then, like us, you'll find that happy medium. Yeah, and I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to, um, you know, a couple of our trips this year. I'm going pretty light. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to that. Yep. So that is going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think is worth the wait. And we'll see everybody on the next one. Yep. See ya, folks. Bye-bye.